The fake news likes to say, oh, he was rambling. No, no, that's not rambling. That's genius when you can connect the dots. <laughs> Check that one out. On, it, it's, it's, th no, think about this. Between Bagram, between you go uh, to uh, Anwar, as we speak, Donald Trump is in the middle of a disastrous town hall campaign event in Flint, Michigan, in which his staggering cognitive decline is on full display, and we have to talk about it. But before we do, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, we have several clips to talk about in this video. Again, at the time of recording, this disastrous event is still ongoing, but there's seemingly no end in sight, and I wanted to bring you some of these clips so we could discuss them in real time. Now, this first one is less of an indictment of Trump himself as it is the cult that he has created, and in particular, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, the woman moderating the debate, the current Republican governor of Arkansas, who, by the way, her only claim to fame is rolling back child labor protections so that children can go work Rather than, in contrast to somebody like, say, Governor Walls, you know, who chooses to feed children, Sarah Huckabee Sanders wants to make sure that they can work and die in factories at an earlier age. So let's start with this clip, and then we'll get into Donald Trump's rapid, staggering cognitive decline. Not once, but twice. You've literally taken a bullet for our country, and yet you keep fighting. You never give up. The reason that you're going to win in November is because America needs a fighter. And we've never needed a fighter more, and we've never had somebody more qualified to step in and our, lead our country than you. I yeah, that's a curious stance to have given the disastrous first administration that he had. Um, given the fact that he was a terrible negotiator, he has no robust record of which to speak, and yet Sarah Huckabee Sanders is dedicating so much time to just lionizing this guy in a very cultish and creepy way. Now let's get on to the really good stuff, which is Donald Trump's brain leaking out of his ears in real time. Just absolute staggering cognitive decline. Having so much money coming out of the energy, we just have the best. We have Bagram in Alaska, they say it might be as big, might be bigger than all of Saudi Arabia. So he's referring to ANWR, A-N-W-R. It's an acronym. It's pronounced ANWR. It stands for Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. Um, and not Bagram. He said Bagram, which was a closed air base in Afghanistan. Right. It was the air base that many conservatives believe we should have maintained rather than shutter, even though we didn't have the manpower to maintain it. So he's confusing Anwar and Bagram. I'm going to play this other clip in which he does it again. He catches himself and he just basically glitches out in real time. It. Uh, check that one out. Bagram. Check that one out. On, it, it's it's th no. Think about this between Bagram, between you go uh, to uh, Anwar, you terminated it. Yeah, so again, what he's trying to say is that he approved during, I think it was the last year of his administration, a number of gas and oil leases in uh, Alaska on Anwar, again, the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, President Biden canceled those in 2023. Of course, it didn't matter because they weren't producing anything at that point anyway. And under the Biden administration, right or wrong, and many progressives find this wrong, more gas and oil leases were approved at a higher rate than the Trump administration, which is why under President Biden, this is a fact, and facts don't care about your feelings, we are producing more energy between oil fracking and renewable energy than we ever were under Donald Trump. Energy production is better objectively, factually under Biden than Trump. But in real time, he keeps confusing Bagram Air Base in Afghanistan with Anwar in Alaska and glitching out in real time. Pretty embarrassing stuff. Another sign of either extraordinary cognitive decline or extraordinary dishonesty is Donald Trump's assessment of his own record on managing the COVID crisis. It was going to be lifted at some point. Then we had COVID. We did a tremendous job in COVID. We gave you a stock market that was higher than just prior to COVID coming in. And we did a great job. We never got credit. We got credit for the best. 
There were multiple, multiple, multiple economic crashes, especially in terms of the stock market during Trump's administration, during COVID. This is something that Neil Cavuto and Stuart Varney have had to point out. These are two Fox News reporters. They've had to repeatedly point out to Trump supporters who go on and tout Trump's record on COVID and his economic management is the stock market crashed multiple times during COVID. And by the way, there have been stock market uh, record-breaking days, multiple ones, under the Biden administration. As a matter of fact, there have been so many this year that Trump has repeatedly tried to take credit for them, saying, well, the stock market's doing so well under Biden, even though I'd predict it would crash, uh, because the market anticipates that I'll be returning to office. I should say that Donald Trump, by the way, is behind in both national and swing state polls to Vice President Kamala Harris, so that's one excuse he can't proffer. But set the economy aside. Donald Trump's disastrous mismanagement of COVID led to more than a million deaths, 500 on his watch, 500 million, or excuse me, 500,000 on his watch. And even when the vaccine rollout under President Biden went into effect, unfortunately, uh, conservative districts, conservative counties and red states disproportionately refused the vaccine in large part due to the uh, entire ethos of COVID and vaccine skepticism that Donald Trump helped create and didn't do nearly enough to combat. So conservatives and Trump supporters died at a disproportionate rate under COVID in large part because they wouldn't get the damn vaccine. And when Donald Trump did uh, pass the vaccine off to President Biden, he didn't include any sort of federal coordination plan, which is why when Biden came into office, Biden put together a plan and Vice President Harris, and as a consequence, the vaccination rate under Biden effectively doubled, right, compared to where it was under Trump. That's how crudely and stupidly Donald Trump mismanaged COVID. At another point in the town hall, when asked about the threat posed to Michigan jobs, this is what uh, Donald Trump had to say. My name is Isaiah, I'm a third generation UAW worker, working hard to build trucks here in America. Yes, yes. Get ready, you're going to be doing plenty of it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I work for Ford, and you actually came and visited the plant that I work at. That's right. You did. And my question to you, sir, is what do you see as the major threats to the future of Michigan manufacturing auto working jobs, and what will you do to eliminate those threats, sir? Okay, so. I'll get into another little bit of a long answer, because when you say major threat, to me, we have one really major threat that's called nuclear weapons. We yeah. Yeah, you heard that right. Donald Trump, of course, has no substantive answer with respect to manufacturing, or particularly auto manufacturing, given there was an actual collapse, uh, relatively speaking, of auto manufacturing on his watch. He promised that there would be no auto plants that ever shut down on his watch. As a matter of fact, they would expand. And as we've covered in previous videos, multiple auto manufacturing plants across the country had to shut during Donald Trump's administration. He can't answer this question substantively. So instead, he thinks, OK, threat, threat, biggest threat, nuclear. So I'm going to say that the, you know, the threat of nuclear war between the United States and Russia is going to be the biggest possible threat because he can't answer this question substantively. Just like when he was asked, you know, a couple of weeks ago about what he would do to lower the cost of child care in this country. And he went on this, you know, incoherent rant replete with non sequiturs and red herrings and sentence fragments uh, that went viral. It's the same thing. Donald Trump has never been a policy wonk. He never will be, and he can't speak substantively about these things, no matter how much MAGA Republicans want you to pretend otherwise. And after all of that, he then gave this answer in terms of his own mental state, describing his rhetorical style and his high IQ. Remember, he's a very stable genius. But the fake news likes to say, the fake news likes to say, oh, he was rambling. No, no, that's not rambling. That's genius when you can connect the dots. You got to put the. Yeah. So, yeah. In the very same town hall in which Donald Trump said nuclear war is the biggest threat to Michigan auto manufacturing jobs, in which he repeatedly confused Anwar and Bagram, in which he completely misrepresented his views on his COVID management and his record, um, he wants you to believe that that's a sign of genius. 
Very strange stuff. Again, I can't imagine what he's saying right now, but I wanted to get this stuff out to you. Donald Trump is in the throes of cognitive decline, which is why the polls, when they ask about Donald Trump's physical and mental fitness, keep going back to the same thing. The majority of Americans think that he is mentally and physically unfit to be president, and certainly in contrast to Vice President uh, Kamala Harris. So food for thought. I think the more he does stuff like this, the more his uh, uh, decay will be on full display. And quite frankly, I think it's something that uh, you and I and everybody else should draw attention to endlessly. So in the meantime, let me know what you think in the comments.